Okay, to uh, orient you, this is the uh, this is the TV room, and uh, then there's a glass bridge that comes into the kitchen area. And this has a view downtown, and as we come in here, there is a uh, we have this fake wood fireplace. View downtown, sitting area, dining table, and the kitchen. And the, uh, as you can see in the kitchen, there's uh, the large hood that is prominent in it. And we have a bar. This is the granite that we used. It's called Blue Pearl. And it's a uh, pretty ordinary granite. Nothing special about it. And if you look, uh, one neat thing about the bar, if you look from this side towards the stove where you can, or the cooktop, you don't see underneath the edge of it. But if you come around to the other side, there is a rather large, that hand depth opening underneath. So we uh, hide all sorts of things underneath here. And in landscape, you'd call that a ha ha. This is the Thermidor cooktop grill, which we use constantly. I know you think you wouldn't use it, but it's uh, great. Below we have drawers. This uh, pot drawer is 16 inches deep, so you can put a pretty deep pot or a mixer in there. The uh, hood is from Venta Hood in uh, Austin, Texas, I believe. And I'll turn it on. You can hear it's uh, fairly loud, but you can grill and not set off the smoke alarms. You can see that the hood is kind of at head height for me. It's got a beveled edge, so if you do get into it, it's not going to do too much damage. But I would have raised it in retrospect. You should have put it at least at my height. Now below the counter over here, we have a cutout for a uh, microwave. And instead of the larger Thermidor, we put in this Panasonic one. You know, make pizzas in it and uh, potatoes and everything else. So it really is an oven substitute. We've got these two wall ovens here. Uh, we never use both of them. The, uh, like this flush panel. I can't read the things unless I put my reading glasses on. But since it gets a little use, it's probably okay for in the kitchen. And uh, they're both convection ovens. Uh, the upper one is microwave. But the microwaves are, are really weak and you wouldn't want to use it like even for heating a cup of coffee. It's really just to kind of boost the roasting or the baking and not, not all that useful. I don't know that I'd get it. The uh, Bosch unit here has a uh, has the edge controls on it, and despite what Consumer Report says, I'd get the edge controls because they uh, they look nicer, and I can tell when the thing's done. The sink area we have this Kohler sink, and as you can see, we we matched the just the sink with the the granite and put a nice just just about a quarter round on the upper and lower edges of the granite. Real simple, don't do anything that's hard to fab or that's going to break. So the Kohler sink is really long. I think it's five feet long. And it has a KWC faucet on it, which is great. Kohler makes a faucet. I think they make a better one now, but the one they made at the time was, wasn't very useful. It has a nice sprayer on it and uh, regular faucet. Both, it has uh, sinks on both sides. You can get it with flat on both on one side or the, the other. There's racks. There's a basin that fits in here. Colander. Um, you know, there's a cutting surface cutting board uh, that comes with it. So it really is a whole food prep area, and that's where you do most of your food prep. We don't have a lot of counter space in the kitchen. We have there and here, and on either side of the cooktop. In the dining area, you can use this as a 
as a, as a prep area also. And above that, this is actually pretty useful when you're having a party. You can put plates and silverware up there. And uh, this is the silly wine fridge that we got. It has two drawers down below their refrigerators. And they're good, especially at a party. You can put the drinks in there. People can get their own drinks and not go in the kitchen. But the thing runs 24-7, even if you shut it off. You have to shut it off at the circuit breaker. It's really, really a terrible design. I wouldn't get that again. The, uh, the Sub-Zero fridge is fine. It's needed some service, but it's been okay. We have pull-out pantries, which are great. Uh, the hardware uh, that the architect specs was Hafela. H-A-E-F-E-L-E. -E. It's really expensive. It doesn't, it doesn't work right. Uh, there's cheaper alternatives, but the pull-out pantries are great. We have a dumb waitress over here, and we don't use it. We don't use a dumb waitress. Can't even get in the garage, but we put our recycling and appliances in here. So that works great. Here is an architect, typical architect stunt where on the plans they put VIF, which means verify in field. It really means I didn't bother to check it out. Because the, the cabinet was spec to this height and the builder built it there. But this thing needs more room. So the builder had to rebuild the cabinet and had to eat the cost. Thanks to the ar architect. The uh, outlets for the vacuum cleaner which I highly recommend you put in even if you're not going to use it. And down below here, there's a kick thing. Yeah, I'll take some cat food and show you how that works. So you can kick this on. Sweep stuff into it, which is neat. The um, Oh yeah, this is interesting. The flooring in here, industrial flooring we got at Costco, and it's just sitting on top of the wood. The wood was taking a beating, and this is uh, $30 worth of this stuff. It just comes in tiles, and you put it together, and everybody who sees the kitchen the first time asks about the flooring, because it just, it just feels so good when you're walking on it. So it's, you drop stuff on it, it doesn't break. So I would uh, probably do something like this if I were doing another kitchen, something soft in the underfoot in the kitchen. Maybe linoleum. They do some amazing things with linoleum now. So the, the, uh, the cabinets we put in, these are uh, cherry, natural finished cherry. The insides are uh, maple. These aren't particularly good glides. They don't, they kind of slam shut. Nice little poles we got. Uh, they have a uh, it's kind of a cylinder taken out of a cylinder, and they feel really nice. We use different ones downstairs. There's a side view. We have skylight above. So notice how the, the granite, see how the lights diffuse off of it? I'll turn these overhead lights on, because I like to read at the counter. So I'm going to turn these on full, and notice how the, the, the light is diffused. You don't see a light bulb, whereas if you had a polished granite, it would look just like the light bulb was in the granite hitting you in the face. So definitely hone your granite, uh, hone your marble, whatever. It, uh, it feels good, it's softer. We don't do any uh, uh, sealing of the granite. Underneath here, underneath the, the back and under all of the cabinets, we have strip outlets, and so we have an outlet every six inches. You can't see them. Uh, these are the aluminum ones. Plug Mold is the brand name, and there's plastic and aluminum. We have puck lights underneath the cabinets. I would probably use a strip light, but these are incandescent. They're not fluorescent, and they give a really nice light. Sometimes you just turn them on low, and it just gives a nice glow. So there's uh, the, the puck lights underneath all of the cabinets and over here also. We have lots of, uh, lots of ceiling lights and no lamps. So we have lots of uh, task lighting in the kitchen and lots of lighting that we can control for different, you know, for parties or watching TV. We have one fluorescent, that's our code fluorescent, 